Yankee Stadium, the timeless cathedral of the baseball world. The Bambino. Speak that magical name today, today. and thoughts drift to, yes, hockey. The big ballpark in the Bronx has been winterized. The luckiest man. A place where history has been made. On the face of the earth. Where legends have been born. And at the end of 60 minutes, we might even crown a Mr. January. Rangers Devils. Today marks a unique chapter in the bitter battle of the Hudson. A rivalry punctuated by dagger goals. Still it's loose! It's It's over! Names worth repeating. And ironclad guarantees. That's the hat trick for Captain Mark Messier! But now the only guarantee is this. When the most famous stadium and hockey intersect, indelible memories will be made as heated rivals take it outside. In the Bronx of New York, largest city in the country, largest metropolitan area, if you count the metropolitan area's 18 million people, two major league baseball teams, one plays here. Two NBA teams, two NFL teams. Since 1982, three NHL teams, one in Manhattan, one in New Jersey, and one that will be here to play the Rangers on Wednesday from Long Island two years from now. They will go to Brooklyn. What a fun place to be, what a dramatic place to be for a game that's been delayed slightly. But during the course of the 15-minute warm-up, Erdy, did you pick up anything that strikes you? Well, the one thing that just looking and observing and watching the players and just getting a sense of, of where they are on the playing field here at Yankee Stadium, watching Marty, Marty Brodeur tend goal uh, just a little bit past the first baseline and then the same with Henrik Lundqvist on the third baseline but to me when Marty Brodeur was done with his warm-up he was making that long walk into the dugout dock and he was acknowledging the fans in behind and that is what it, this game is all about I mean for Marty Brodeur to be able to acknowledge the fans I'm sure didn't know what they were yelling but I'm sure yelling his name but to me for him to acknowledge with his stick or uh, his glove and then making that slow walk down the uh, dugout steps because you got to walk sideways when you're a goaltender with your skates and your pads but to me that was something that really kind of caught my eye in that 15 minutes of the warm-up what might catch the ear of the New York Rangers from their coach Elaine Vigneault let's listen in Okay, man, we need to put our focus here on the process here. Just like we saw on the tape before the game. We know this is going to be a greasy game. That's how this team plays. With the puck in our zone, chip and slash. In the neutral zone, move the puck before they set up. In the offensive zone, before they swarm, east, west, or low to high, we've got to move it quick. If we don't have the puck, I want numbers. I want numbers coming back, work our way back. I want numbers in our end. With their top line, it's a big line. When they've got the puck, we need numbers, we need good sticks, we need good body position here. Shift at a time, go out there, let's have fun. Great, great day to be here, let's go. Danny, ready? Go! Oh, yeah. Okay, one right And now the Devils wait. Translate a couple of things for us there. Well, I mean, strength in numbers. That, that, that's what uh, Elaine Vigneault and his coaching staff wants for the Rangers. Chipping and slash and making sure that they're getting pucks in behind, but then getting support in there when they do chip. So no, less one-on-one, -on -one, more two-on-one -on -one play. In order to play that way, you got to be willing to skate. And here at Yankee Stadium, a home game for the Devils. And so their public address announcer is here. His name is Kevin Clark. Here to bring out your teams, the NYPD and FDNY Pipes and Drums.
ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ice the New York Rangers. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ice your new Jersey Devils! We all have a wonderful experience ahead of us. Only 16 players out of the 40 in uniform today have ever played in an outdoor game. And we look on from venerable Yankee Stadium, the anthem and the puck drop in a moment. There has been some uncertainty until the warm-up, and now it follows a normal plan. The anthem first. Here again, Kevin Clark. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as today's colors are presented by the NYPD FDNY Color Guard. And now, to sing the national anthem, Tony Award nominated actress and star of the new musical, Bullets Over Broadway, Marin Maisie. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the the vicinity the black diamond jet team former military fighter pilots from the United States Navy and the United States Air Force all a part of the salute to hockey on this day over Yankee Stadium with a pinstripe mask and a pinstripe pair of pads Henrik Lundqvist gold medal winner in the Olympics ninth year with the Rangers won at least 20 and all the prior eight the only guy to do that 49th career game against the Devils. Martin Brodeur, two-time gold medal winner, 20th year with the Devils, winning as goalie in the NHL, holder of 17 records, 100th career game against the New York Rangers. And Yaramir Yager, the active scoring leader in all the NHL today, leads his team in points. Headed to the Olympics for Team Canada, Rick Nash, an explosive year for him. He leads the Rangers with 17 goals. Andy Green and Mark Fain. Mark Fain, number seven. You see him at the right of your screen. 
He is the first home player to wear number seven in Yankee Stadium since Mickey Mantle had that number retired in 1969. In the first foray near Brodeur, and he slugged it along. Ryan McDonough will be back on the fence, as you notice, with Dan Girardi, as this one is fired back around and swirls over near Girardi, punched it behind, hoping for McDonough, burrowing in this time and getting some help from Yager along the way, Jacob Josephson. Along near Yager, battles at the half boards, and it trickled on to center, could not be handled by Green, forced back in by Chris Kreider. A New Englander in Yankee Stadium, interesting. This one popped back in and can be corralled by Stahl, rattled on around for Ryan Callahan, skipped on by Eliash, and then to center. And then drubbed back in. Pierre, what's your read on the ice compared to, say, Ann Arbor? Good, very good. Let's go build up, and the players are moving real quick right now, Doc, and they're real, real quick. Big hit there from Ryan Callahan in behind a play on Bryce Self. Dorian Callahan snapped his stick in half. There was a playoff atmosphere in the warm-up here between both teams. Guys were talking to one another. It wasn't friendly conversation either, man. It was fast. Oh, it was between teams then. Yes, sir. Ah, carried across here by Henrique. Dropped off, and then having that knife the way to the corner, Michael Ryder. Flipped on back near Ryder. Joust there with Kevin Klein, recently from Nashville. And while Pouliot gave it on across, this one scurried on now and flung back into the catching glove of Brodeur by Matt Zuccarello, and a crowd has gathered for the first time. We we'll talked about once you get in action, you do what you're supposed to do. It's just another game, and Brian Callahan finishing a check on the captain. Two captains, two pairs of 24. And to finish it there from Callahan on Salvador. And two guys that really had to earn their way into the National Hockey League. Not an easy league to make, as you know, Eddie, but boy, both those guys battle long and hard to get to where they are, and the fact they're captains now is amazing. Yeah, heart and soul type of players in every sense of the phrase. One-handed along by Green and taken by Fain. Native of New Hampshire, Mark Fain nicely steps by and shoots one that is sealed up by Lundquist. Expand your hockey experience with the Verizon Star Cam on NBCSports.com. Throughout the game, we're streaming a live ISO cam following star players like Ryan Callahan and Yarmir Yager. The Verizon Star Cam available now at NBCSports.com. And there from way up high, an offensive zone faceoff for New Jersey. Quite a scene, isn't it? It is Stahl. Kept alive for a try to the front. Bounce loose. Ryan Carter tries for that, but then back around. A good collision there. Paul Chinkoff is known for that, and this one was sent wide. The ordinary guys are out there for New Jersey right now. A fourth line that's been together for part of three seasons, and we get our first penalty call. Looks like it's going to be on Brian Boyle. It is for that hit. Doc talked about a Volchenkov on Boyle, Eddie, and Boyle didn't like it. You'll see the explosion. Those are two oh, big balls. Good, that's a good play. That just stayed. Yep. That's just a hockey play, a collision, a battle for position. Now, I don't know if that was the follow through there. That was the penalty that was called, but if it was on the initial one, that's not a penalty. Power play is brought to you by Ford, and it has motored along great for New Jersey. Seven for the last 20 over six games. Rangers at 80% recently in killing them all. Led to the back for a beat on a cross. Zidlitsky with it there. Angled one over for Yarmir. Yager guided one hoping for Elias, but instead Dan Girardi stumbles down, but gets a nice play on. And it's lobbed back out by Dominic Moore, and we have something else here. Elias going to get a penalty for a trip. Paul Dvorsky made the initial call on Brian Boyle. He makes this call on Patrick Elias. Watch 26 in the red colored sweater. He's going to come over and get a stick involved in the feet. Coming up, keep her rocking, and right there, it's going to be a trip on Dan Girardi. And you see Paul Dvorsky raise his arm. So it will be four aside. Paul Dvorsky, a longtime veteran referee who has worked gold medal games in the Olympics from Hummelstown, Pennsylvania. Puck to the back now, and it is kept by McDonough for a shot that's knife free. Jabbed at and pushed just wide, and a good try there by Richards, and the net has become dislodged.
Well, you win a face-off, you dictate, dictate the terms. Good help there from Carl Hagelin on this four-on-four, -four. and then Richard stays with this puck. And then there you see the stick get caught up in the jersey of Carl Hagelin, and that's why the net came off. It was a stick of Marty Brodeur that got lodged into the jersey of Carl Hagelin, who was trying to track down that puck. Usually these outdoor games have a friendly feel at the start. There's no friendship here right now. These guys are getting after one another, and you can sense as this goes along, the tighter it is, the harder it's going to be for both these teams to play. And I think for sure, Pierre, that both coaches have expressed to their teams of, yeah, the event and everything that comes with it, but at the end of the day, it's two points, and the Devils are chasing the Rangers, and who knows where this, you know, these points could lead to moving down the road towards the playoffs. The Rangers are in second in the Metropolitan Division right now. If they win this game in 60, they will, of course, keep that. If the Devils win it in 60 on a technicality of having played one less game, they will own second. The highest they've been for a while. Zidlitsky walls off Brad Richards and takes it away and outlets in this four-on-four. Four. Yager moving ahead. A check has gone into the boards as Yager pivots and shot one that was blocked down. Girardi got in the way of that one. That was McDonough with a Brent Seabrook type hit on Travis Zajac. That was Wisconsin against North Dakota and Wisconsin won. This one fed on back. Andy Green with that on across now for a shot by Bain and that one blocked. Taken on by Michael Ryder. Skidded behind for Henrique. Given a couple of shoves there and rocked a little bit for his trouble by Ryan McDonough. And that one squib free to be carried right back out again. Carl Haglin out of the University of Michigan drops that one in and Marty Brodeur comes out to handle. Marty Brodeur was once recruited by St. Lawrence University, decided on the junior route. Was that a failure on your part to recruit him, Pierre? Yes, sir. <laughs> Up the wing it comes for a drive, save made by Brodeur, a scorcher from Pouillot. And then it is whacked back in. What so now Fain. What an atmosphere down here, Doc and Eddie. Unbelievable pace. A lot of chatter at the benches, and Pierre has his hand on the call switch. Puck to center, spun on by Dinah Zubris. And then ripped right back out again. Sent back across now for the bank back in by Derek Broussard. Rodour just ladles it along neatly onto Volchenkov, and he's able to step ahead. Three seconds and two on the abbreviated power play for the Rangers. Did not have much possession or any energy to that. 4.20 gone, first period, and we have no score in the game. The shots are 3-2 Rangers. Bryce Salvador, captain of New Jersey, sees this one poke free by Kreider. Salvador lifted it along again, and it skipped away from Mark Stahl. Rushing on is Henrique, canceled out with a neat reach by Stahl, guided behind for Anton Strahlman. Ben Strawman saw it set up by Nash for the carry back on by Stepan, handed up the wing for Kreider, and it's pushed on goal by Kreider and stopped by Marty Brodeur. Kreider steps toward that one, but it's McDonough persisting. Then around behind, Stepan was carried to the boards there, and this one is kicked away from Strawman, but followed up neatly and carried back on again by Carcillo, who was hit. Carcillo turns and tries to center one, and Brodeur was able to guide that one away. On to the back now to Girardi. Led on for McDonough. And McDonough able to rattle it back around. So now it is Carcillo. Menaced by Zidlitsky. And it is pulled free and started back up by Ryan Plo. The Rangers will be playing the Islanders here on Wednesday. Here's Elias free. Score! Patrick Elias! Just freed from the box seconds earlier on a breakaway and the first goal of the game. The first hockey goal at Yankee Stadium. Well, Patrick Elias finds himself up into this area here. What a pass from Ryan Klo. And then here comes Elias. Beats Henrik Lundqvist to the stick side, but Klo made a great play to avoid contact right here. Stays with it, and here comes Elias. Off the pipe and in for Elias's eighth of the year at 5.36, and Klo with a wonderful pass. Klo, the young man from Newfoundland whose father is a 
deep sea fishermen battling all the elements that you often see on television in those reality fishing shows. But he's here watching his son play today. Off of Callahan, back deep, Zidlitsky rocks there. Pumped back along and it's fed on to Carter. Moves back out again and it's dropped back in for Steve Bernier. Steven Gianta, the centerman on this line, and Gianta takes this one and then just that quickly lost. Nice rag of the puck by Zidlitsky. Little trouble, but Carter finds the handle on it and spins it around further. Bernier able to pivot away with this. Bernier fed, Carter the shot, and that one slowed down and paddled away by Lundquist. Forced onto the back by Salvador, kept play alive, and it's Carter turning with it again. Watched there by Stahl, guided it back for a hurried shot that skips to the corner and can be fielded there by Bernier, but then lost just that quickly, and the Rangers can accelerate back out. Haglund dropped it back in. The first seven minutes of the first period have been played. The shots are not high. Four to three in favor of the Rangers. Elias with the lone goal. It is Dan Girardi back. Ryan Klo, the primary assist. We'll see if there's another. Here's Yager flying one that went wide. Bounced on over for Josephson to play along to Zajac. Zajac twisting for Josephson, but that bounced off of Lundquist and hopped wide. This is the one line Pete DeBoer says is not owning the chemistry of his other three, and he's still trying some wingers to work with Yager and with Zajac. Meanwhile, to the corner of the battle on, it is Fain there, trying to wedge his way along was Pouillot, got it back to Girardi for a shot that was ladled wide by Zajac of the Devils. Josephson there, flopped it on out to center, corralled there by Girardi, and sped back on, but the follow-up now came from Andy Green. Former Miami Red Hawk saw this one go back to Zidlitsky now. And a quick shot was blocked aside as Stepan let that one go. Nice pass there from Kreider. Then you saw John Moore jump in there to keep that play alive. Second time, Moore has been up the ice. He had a real good scoring chance a little bit earlier on that four on four. But that's really where the Rangers have changed their game and coaching philosophy from John Tortorella to Elaine Vigneault. They really want to get their defensemen involved, pinch pucks in, keep plays alive, try to play 200 feet away from the goaltender. Well, it was tremendous flow in this game. Tremendous, tremendous flow. It is Nash leading it ahead. Settled down there and turning with it, Kreider. Wall for his trouble by Volchenkov. Meanwhile, it comes back up the boards and can be played on out to center by Elias. Good. A test for possession. Damian Bruner, former Detroit Red Wings, sees this one go back over to Brian Boyle. Boston College product, tried it for Carcillo and back in. Pierre, did you pick up certain scoop about uh, Carcillo, uh, voiced by him pertaining to Wednesday? Here's a drive by Strawman. Oh, rebound, score! It's Dominic Moore, and the game is tied! Well, if you want to score goals in this area of the field, you got to go to short right field here at Yankee Stadium. Watch where Dominic Moore ends up. The shot from the point, Moore finds it, never gets to Marty Brodeur, and he puts it into the wide open net. And I love the way Strawman doesn't tee this puck up. He just launches it on goal so the Devils can't get in the shooting lane. And as you said, Dominic Moore goes harder than that. Anton Volchenkov can't track on him. 1-1. One, one. Well, Volchenkov had his backside to the play when the shot was coming from Strawman. And literally hit him on the backside. And Brodeur was looking for it. He was down, and there was Dominic Moore with a wide open net. Right to the front, and this time he clomps the glove right down on it. 10.40 to go first period, and both teams have scored here. Elias for New Jersey, Dominic Moore for the Rangers. Welcome back to Yankee Stadium 1-1, Rangers and Devils. It's not a very friendly atmosphere down here at ice level. And you see Ryan McDonough out of the University of Wisconsin on Travis Zajac at the University of North Dakota. Both those guys getting after one another. And as they separate, Steve Miller and Leisman trying to break them up. Sticks are flying, bodies are flying, energy's flying, and we got a flying game right now. How Lots are you of fixed? action, Doc. Yeah, how are you fixed for Blades? Have <laughs> <laughs> we ever had wrestling here at Yankee Stadium, Doc? It looked like... Uh, I'm you sure they have. Cholak yeah. with a little bit of a uh, scissors hole there from Travis Zajac on 
Ryan McDonough. That's a lot like Brent Seabrook and Dan Cleary back at Wrigley Field a few years ago at the Winter Classic. Who was that wrestler you mentioned? Yukon Moose Cholak. <laughs> Very impressive. <laughs> a little heavier than Brian Boyle and not as athletic, I would assume. <laughs> this one fed along now for Zidlitsky, then back to Bryce Salvador. Rocked a little bit. It's poked along by Callahan. Tried to march to the front, no luck because of Henry. And outlet it across for the carry by Michael Ryder. His third outdoor game in the NHL that has been regular season. He was in that first one that was sub-zero and a chill factor that was buried up in Edmonton. This one is fired on along to be kept by Jedlitsky again. Rattled on around for Henrik, stood up by Strom, and it skipped through now to Ryan Klo. Klo, the primary and only assist on the goal by Patrick Elliott. It is Dominic Moore from Strom and, and Boyle with the Ranger goal. They try to feed in front, no luck. Jedlitsky was back in very deep there, and it is thrown by Henrik, but outletted for the control of Callahan, just that quickly brushed away by the very responsible defensive forward this time. Spun back around for a Ryder, wants to play it on through, and it is to Carter. Ryan Carter tried to pull the trigger on that shot, and no luck. Good be there for McDonough one-on-one. -on -one. When the Devils went to their Stanley Cup final two years ago, the line that's out there right now was the only one that was not changed en route. 11, 18, and 20. We get a stoppage of play, and we're getting a tripping call coming up. Power play when we come back, 1-1. One, one. Time now for Edward Jones FaceTime. Pierre is with Devils coach Peter DeVore. Coach, is this about as physical as you wanted it to be? It is for, you know, the circumstances. I think you got uh, two emotional teams. We want to keep those emotions in check. Hopefully stay out of the penalty box, but I like the pace early. I was really impressed with your practice yesterday. It looked like there was a rhyme and reason to it. What was the rhyme and reason? Well, we wanted to make sure uh, we respected the Rangers' speed and try to contain it a little bit, try to play as much in their end as we can and control the puck. So far, we've been doing a pretty good job early. Thanks very much, Thank Coach. You. Offensive zone faceoff coming up for the Devils. Power play because of the minor penalty that was assessed to Derek Broussard for tripping. Yeah, not a good penalty by Broussard. Offensive zone, as it were. And so Travis Zajac will try to win this from Brian Boyle. We have a nice flaw here. Seems like it. We have to repair this before the faceoff. Well, here's the penalty. Watch Derek Broussard stick his skate out there to try to cause some interference. That's just not a good penalty at all. As that's a dangerous play there, and Steven Gianta goes to his backside. As they maintain the ice, you'll notice that some of the players have the smeared eye black on, the old Farkas eye black, the traditional kind. Others have the strips that go underneath the eyes. Marty Brodeur was saying yesterday, he wasn't sure if he wanted to use those because it hurts when you pull them off. <laughs> Ah, he's got, yeah, he's got the, uh, he's got the spread on eye black. No one has done a Paul Ranger and put tiger stripes on today, though. <laughs> Marty Brodeur's late father, Dennis, was quite a photographer, and this was one of his earliest works. <laughs> I don't know what he'd be, four or five years old then. Enjoyed very much playing hockey after school in suburban Montreal. He said there would be two shifts of hockey and one of homework. I'd squeeze in the homework and play long on hockey, and it wasn't always as a goaltender. In street hockey, he would always be a forward. And Corey Schneider, his backup goaltender, said yesterday that in Marblehead, Massachusetts, whenever he played on the pond, he was always a forward. It must be the dream of goaltenders to once in a while score. Marty Brodeur has done that in the playoffs once. Out in Monument Park is Jeremy Roenick. Hey, thanks a lot, Doc. Yes, I'm right in the middle of Monument Park where the Yankees pay tribute to some of the greatest Yankees ever to don the Yankee pinstripe. 17 players' numbers have been retired. Names like Babe Ruth, Joe DiMaggio, Lou Gehrig, Mickey Mantle, and of course the boss, George Steinbrenner, all creating the mystique that we know of today as the New York Yankees. Pretty cool back here, Doc. There's a certain awe that you have when you walk by all of those names, whether you're a Yankee fan or just like baseball. 
We had that tour just a couple of days ago, and you come away rather quiet. Here's Yager moving on in. Wheeling one out in front, score! Patrick Elias on the pass from Yager. Pete DeBoer looked at his staff after Yarmir Yager did that, and he went, wow, that's something special. And is it ever Eddie and Doc? You talk about patience, outweighting the goaltender, and that's exactly what Yarmir Yager does. Here's Yager. Great look. Right where Derek Jeter calls home on a lot of days here for the New York Yankees. What a perfect play to hold on to that puck, wait Henrik Lundqvist out, and throw it right back in a wide open net. Elias is second of the day, ninth of the year, and his second on a power play. Lundqvist will hold this one. Eddie Yager looks great there because of the separation. Travis Ajak made a nice little pick play. It wasn't caught, and that opened up a big seam for Yager to go wide. You'll see number 19 right there, Zajac. That creates that little pick for Yager to go around. More rocking to the boards, and Nash fed one that skipped across. Flagged down and carried to the outside by Brad Richards. His pass broken up, and eventually back at center, it must be played. So Brodeur slings one ahead that can be carried on by Henrique, and he's got a man breaking, can't get the pass there. It careened on back, and the Devils with a fresh set of defense. Salvador on across. By Salvador, ripped one ahead that goes all the way back down the ice. And an icing is called from this. Devils in the red and green with which they began their appearance in New Jersey in 1982. They changed colors to red and black in 1992, 10 years later. It is with the red and black that they have been the most successful with three Stanley Cups over the span. The Rangers just that trademark diagonal. Rangers across the front. And New York when they are a road team. This one sped wide, all of it being called back on an offside. Time now for our Coors Light Cold Hard Facts. Yaramir is magnificent. He is now in the top ten of all four major categories, not active, all time. You see next on the list is the general manager of the Tampa Bay Lightning and the toast of Detroit for so many years. He has passed Mario Lemieux. He has never scored a goal on Henrik Lundqvist in three games played against the Rangers, but he has now, counting this to Elias, six assists in the three and a fraction games. In his earlier years, he was just celebrated for his magnificence in scoring. In the later years, with Philadelphia and Boston and Dallas and New Jersey, he's been discussed a lot about his abilities offensively, but also with what a great team guy he is and how wonderful he is with developing players and helping them. Meanwhile, this comes back on for Dinah Zubris to throw out. Zubris tried to follow up to Elias, no luck. I could speak to that, Doc. I played with Yarmir Yager in Pittsburgh many moons ago. And one of those quiet leaders that uh, always had a word of advice for you. Bruner with one that's waffle boarded away by Lundqvist. Chopped along near Dinah Zubris. Zubris ties up there with Richards. Meanwhile, Kevin Klein comes in. This one squibbed off the glass behind. Reaching in was Hagler. Tries to pull free. Gloved on by Brad Richards, but canceled out very quickly by Eric Shellen. Shellen, now the rookie, sees this one come ahead now for Yager. Drifting along, Yager fed it across, had to be gloved down by Jacob Josephson. Josephson run off by Kreider, reaching in as McDonough. The two-a-side battle. Came to the front and Zajac peeled away with it, then threw it stiffly on to Yager. Drops it back over for Zajac, with Jacobson near the front, peels off and looks over the traffic. Little over six and a half to go here. Dropped off to Yager again. Yager reaching in, 
still able to control with all of that reach along the side. Jostled then by McDonough, and the puck comes free for the Rangers to go on the attack. They've got a four on two. It's Nash leading one across, but that one careened on to Josephson. Starts it back up with Yager ahead, gives it to him on side. Yager drops it off, held there, turned along by Zajac, and a save is made by Lundquist. Popped across from Kreider, Nash advances it on. Stepan trying to move in further. The U.S. Olympian was crossed off by Andy Green. Then he got in the way of the much bigger Brian Boyle. Good recovery there from Green. Looked like he was beat. What a great job there of shutting off that opportunity. Ryder bucked in two. Coming along is Dominic Moore, the only goal scorer for the Rangers thus far. Boyle jostles with Andy Green. Puck up the boards and Ryder tried to spin it through, could not. Green with another try this time. This one gets as far as center and back down and will go for an icing. Oh. Download the NBC Sports Live Extra app to watch the game live on your phone or tablet. The NBC Sports Live Extra app on NBCSports.com slash Live Extra and NHL.com. Well, Pierre may mention a little bit earlier, a real good pace on both sides. Lane Vigneault, the first-year head coach of the Rangers, and for Peter DeBoer of the Devils. Good pace. Kept by Klein. Pouliot, back to him. Flexed on, close. Pass came across to Ryder. And offside on the play was Adam Henrique. The venerable Patrick Elioff. 37 years of age, longtime Devil has scored twice for them. It's 2-1 New Jersey. Moments ago during this stoppage of play, it's Yaramir Yager and his centerman, Travis Zajac. Uh, just understanding the, the cycle play that they had going on to the left of Henrik Lundqvist. Don't remember him being so animated in prior years, maybe in those early years you, you talked about. Yeah, you know what, Doc? I, I'll say, I, I think he was he was always engaged. I think he would pick a spot, probably more behind the scenes maybe now, but of course, as you know, over the years, there's so many more cameras, there's so many more eyes on what, what's going on, but you know, just playing with him as I did, I mean, he was always one of those guys, if you come off after a shift and just try to go to school and, and something that might benefit the next shift, the next opportunity you get to you know, make that same type of play. Communication is such an important part. Aspiring along the boards. In those early years at Old Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, he would run the steps an hour and a half before the game. Glad he didn't try that here. Here's a chance around in front. Oh, nice feed by Stahl, but driven down near the front of the net was Brassard. Nice conception of a play on the part of the Rangers that time. Here's Gianna spinning one on, and Stahl will go back to get it. Very friendly down here. Gianna and Zuccarello. Gianna just slashed Zuccarello as it went for a line change. It's going to heat up. Markham, stay here. I'm just fascinated by the pictures that our crew here in New York is giving us with the backdrop of the stadium and sometimes uh, if I grow quiet, nobody's going to be bothered by that, I'm sure. But taking in the whole scene is really fantastic. This is carried on now by Klein. Jammed right back near Bruner. And then it is Callahan. And there'll be an icing that will come from this. What? The one thing that has been noticeable is that the puck is not settling smooth. It's been bouncing a lot. And here's a chance right there for Mark Stahl. And you see that puck take a funny bounce over his stick. And then Derek Brassard follows up. Great play there in recognition from Mark Stahl. Once he knew he couldn't take that shot, throw it back to the front of the net. And then you see looking Anton Volchenkov taking a piece of Derek Brassard. Yager sped one in front that careens to the back. And a drive by Fane knockout. Rebound. Score! Maybe it was the conversation with Zajac at the bench. But Yager has set up another scoring play, and it's 3-1 to one, New Jersey. Well, we talk about it a lot. If you want to score, you got to get to the front of the net. Watch where eventually this puck ends up, and Travis Zajac is right there. He's got body position. That's a great save from Henrik Lundqvist, and his Lundqvist is moving right, trying to get back to his left. 
There's a wide open net there for Travis Zajac. Stick on the ice, that's the key. If his stick's up in the air, he's got no chance of getting that puck. The scoring has occurred in less than 11 minutes. All four goals, three by New Jersey. Klo brings it in, hands it on across to Ryder for Klo! And that one wouldn't go. Ryder tries to center, and it's blocked off, and so now it's Girardi. Smoked out by Ryder. It's tapped across. Klo got it there. Fed one that shanked off of Ryder and is guided along to Kreider. Run into there by Fain. Puck skipped on over and can be handled by Nash. As they play along the boards, Pierre, we talked about the springy boards in Detroit as well as in Ann Arbor. Do you notice the boards being different today? Offside is called. Clock, they're not nearly as lively, obviously, as what we see in Chicago or Detroit. Let me earn some cash here. Let's go inside the glass presented by Progressive Insurance with Pierre Maguire. Thanks very much, Doc. You and I were here for practice yesterday. We had a chance to watch the Devils in particular and Pete the board did a fantastic job, I think, orchestrating his team. They worked on stretch passes. We saw that on the Elias goal. They worked on cycle. We saw that on the last goal for the Devils. And they also worked, and the biggest thing was their transition game from defense to forge. And we've seen that really work well for the Devils. I thought their practice yesterday was unbelievably well orchestrated. Well, they started out with uh, with what we would call three on twos, I guess, Pierre. Is that right? Yes. I mean, that's what how you describe them, making doing line rushes, making sure that was done. Then um, then transition play. They ended up with shootouts, and of course, that's sort of a sore spot with New Jersey because they're the only team that hasn't won one of the shootouts yet. 0 for 8 this year. Here's a chance. Oh, and it's off Brodeur and in! And the Rangers have gotten back to within one. Mark Stahl has made this a 3-2 game. Talk about winning a faceoff. You win the draw back and then you find an opportunity to work yourself into this area. Not a good goal given up by Marty Brodeur, but again, never a bad play to just fire the puck at the net. Looks like it made it change direction. It might have went off of Brian Boyle in front of the net, but it just barely gets to the back of the net. He's not square to the shooter, Eddie. I think more than anything else, that's why he got beat from a bad angle. No, that puck changed direction. I, that, I think he was square. I, I think he was square. I just think that he was anticipating the puck to go a little bit to his left, and all of a sudden it changed direction and found its way between the legs. Off of McDonough, retrieved there, trying to jam it on as Zubris. Paw free and fed over for a bouncing puck that careened on off of Dinah Zubris, sped by Elias in search of the hat trick. Another drive past the glove hand of Henrik Lundqvist. A turnover, and Elias can start right back in. Got it over on Brunner, a shot that was deflected by Girardi. Played on further, Zubris wiped out there as he's run into by McDonough. And it's carefully guided around to that man, Dan Girardi. Leader in hits and block shots on this Rangers team. Plays it back in. No icing on the play, so the Devils can assert themselves back ahead. With the last two minutes of the first period, flashing up on the big board at center field and the top of your screen. Thrown by Richards, and that one hopped wide. Came on to Stahl. Stahl with a shot that careened on over. Bad angle shot by Richards. It's blocked off by Brodeur. Bain ties up his man. Jelena tried to play further. Michael Ryder took over. Fielder to pass on to Klo. Sent one ahead at center that skipped away from Henrique. And then is taken along by Stahl. Stahl jabbed it ahead. It's swatted on out right on the money for Haglin by Richards. Moving ahead with Callahan. Trying to get by. Zidlitsky says no. Not once, but twice. Then Salvador. Then Ryder. Flown on out by Ryder. And settled down by McDonough. Stall from Dominic Moore at 16.59. 48 seconds separated the two goals. Played, played back along again and outlet it up the wing for the carry back over by Kreider. Trying to work his way in front. Wedged off and up by Fain. There'll be a penalty coming up. And the Rangers will get a power play and a chance to even it up as Mark Fain will go to the box. Wes McCauley makes the call. He's got a great view of it. You'll see the official number four. 
Fain has to turn and go. He's got to turn to his right. It gets a very quick Chris Kreider. The free hand comes out, and McCauley's in perfect position to make the call. You'll see him just coming in behind the net. That's the right call. I didn't a zero tolerance league. Perry, you got the perfect vantage point at ice level. How, how do you think it is picking up the pucks for the goaltenders with uh, the angles different, the depth perception different with the crowd being so far away and the players having the puck on their stick, picking up the puck when it comes off their stick? Boy, I think that's a great point, an awesome question. I think they're having a little bit of a problem. Now we're getting the lights are getting brighter from up top, and it's changed again, the perspective for the goaltenders. So I would agree that that's a bit of an issue. But nonetheless, I mean, these guys are battling through it, and they're used to battling through a lot of stuff. But I think that's a great point, Eddie. I remember at Fenway Park, both goaltenders were talking the day before for Philadelphia Boston about possible sky hooks that would intentionally be sent high and dropped into your zone just to see if you could follow them and whether you could recover them or not. Be interesting to watch this power play. Scotty Arneal's the architect of the Ranger power play. I haven't seen the Ranger power play move a puck this far in a very long time. Three for their last 21. Elias tried to reach that, but it skipped around in front and dug out there by Volchenkov. They try to center, no luck. Volchenkov makes them drop back in the last 25 of this period. Bain sitting in the box. McDonough leads it ahead. Drawn right to Brodeur. Sky hooks one out. And the center. Not trying to cause trouble for Lundqvist, but look at this. Henrique got it, and Lundqvist had to act quickly on that shorthanded try by Adam Henrique. Three seconds and two. One last try is wide, hopped off the shelf, and the horn sounds to end the first 20 minutes. Ten shots apiece. Three goals, New Jersey. Two by Patrick Eliash. Two goals for the Rangers, Dominic Moore and Mark Stahl. Stay tuned for the Lexus Intermission Report with Liam, Mike, and Keith. A preview of the Olympics in Sochi and a performance by Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes. Patrick Eliash with a couple of goals in this contest here today. Do they have good enough arms to reach the ice with a hat? It was in Philadelphia two years ago that the snow arrived in the second period. In Ann Arbor, it was before, during, and after <laughs> for the rest of the evening. In the box is Fain on a holding minor. The Rangers with a man advantage for a minute 12 and a chance to get this game tied. Eddie, any surprises for you from the first period that we saw? Not really. Quality chances. Pierre touched on it right away of how how crisp and how quick of a pace that this game has been. The one thing I did take notice and just looking at some replays over the course of that first intermission, less passing to do, you better. Uh, you're better off to just get pucks in net and understand that. I mean, if, it's a, if it's an obvious one, well, then go ahead. But we've seen pucks exploding in a lot of different situations when players have gone to stick handle or try to make a pass. Yeah, bounced over and hopped over are one of the many descriptions <laughs> that was frequent in the first period as McDonough takes this with 50 to go on his team's power play. They divide the ends up. Oh, and that was lift off of Steven Gianta. That's serious. He got that one up and in a hurry right in the face. Well, Matt Zuccarello was trying to get this pass, this pass across the ice. And it catches Gianta as he's coming back. Watch Zuccarello. He's going to enter the zone. Now he's going to try to make this pass rink wide. And it looks like it might have went off the stick of Anton Volchenkov and then right up the side of the face of Steven Gianta. Rich Tenziano, the longtime athletic trainer of the Devils, is out there tending to him now. As Yeah, it did look like yeah. it careened off a stick, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, rode right up the stick of Volchenkov. And when you're... I mean, when you're within, what, five feet, eight feet, you're expecting that pass to be along the ice. It ended up catching Gianta in there. You see him getting some medical attention. You start worrying about chin, jaw area, sutures and all that. He's another one of those mighty mites out of Jerry York's Boston College. And you think about Cam Atkinson, his brother Brian Gianta, the captain of the Montreal Canadiens. There's so many of them. 
that are just littering the National Hockey League. Undersized players coming out of Boston College who have been tremendous players in this league. Uh, Johnny Goudreau there, a draft yep. pick of the uh, Calgary Flames, had a goal last night in a 3-2 win. BC over Penn State last night in Happy Valley. Exceptions to every rule. Brian Boyle plays for the Rangers <laughs> at 6-7. <laughs> can't have all. Well, he can count his two. He can count his two then. If yes, that's right. This one thrown and it ricocheted wide on the try by Richards. Grabbed off by Nash. Ten goals in the last ten games. Nash tried to pull the trigger and they were watching him closely. Meanwhile, there's a Zajac connecting on to Elias. Elias with 23 to go on his team's shorthanded situation. Shot one off a ranger stick and why? So now it's McDonough outletting on to Richards. Watched there by Henry. Flopped it back into the Salvador corner. Drops it back on to Zubris. Cleared back down again. The 230s, Henrik Lundqvist and Marty Brodeur here. Henrik a shot that had to be guided away by McDonough. They've only faced each other 49 times. Nine years for Lundqvist in the league and 20 for Martin Brodeur. No! This one jabbed back down. Full strength action here. Early stages, second period. Game was, that was delayed a half hour by Sunglade. And for that reason, if you're just joining us, we hope you stay with us because it's very entertaining in a wonderful venue called Yankee Stadium and a game of meaning. Three points separate six teams in the Metropolitan Division. At the top of the six, the Rangers, the Devils could pass them with a 60-minute win here. Josephson tried to connect with Zajac. At some point here, Doc, the lights are going to take full effect because of how cloudy it has gotten here at Yankee Stadium. Much greater down here now. It's easier to track the puck, I believe, if you're going compared to the first period. It is Stahl yanking it on back to Anton Strawman of the Rangers' defense. 2.20 gone here in the second. Light snow was falling as we came back for the start of this period. Down to the ice goes Pouillot, skidding down to Jelena. No arms are up. It's carried back up again by Ryan Plo. The Newfoundlander able to hand it across now to Michael Ryder, who shot ricocheted up off the glass. Newfoundland line here, at least two-thirds of it with those two guys, brought on by John Moore. Fed went across! Zuccarello scores! It's a tie game! No hesitation from the Chicago native John Moore, the defenseman jumping into the play. The puck is over in this area, but then Moore will get on his horse and pick up this puck. And then he throws this puck rink wide to Matt Zuccarello, who's going hard to the net. Great speed from Moore, laid into an area, and boy, that puck looked like it went off the left skate of Zuccarello from that vantage point. Benoit Pouillot made a great play. You're right about John Moore, but the play was made when Benoit Pouillot took Bryce Salvador off the puck. And that led to the odd man rush. Salvador's a defenseman. He got hung up with Benoit Pouillot. I did not see a kicking motion there from Matt Zuccarello, who was trying to slow down. He was digging his heel. He was digging his heel into the ice. That's how you make a stop. That's how you slow down. And this puck goes off the left skate, the left heel, and it's a 3-3 game. So Lundqvist sweeps it along. Reversing around, hoping for Girardi, but not getting him. That time was McDonough. Puck came to the back. Fain handed it over for a shot by Green, and that one blocked in front. Zubris was trying to stir things up and causing confusion to Lundqvist. Carried on by Nash, falling his fame. He's got Kreider on the wing, tipped up to the glass. Laid back along for the carry by Eliash. Picks up Zubris, gets on over to Josephson, lobbed in front, and it's Zubris again, and a drive that ricocheted back. That was Green moving up on the play. Odd man rush for the Rangers, a three on one. Hit the post with the shot. Now it's the Devils' turn to come back. Green sky hooks one on back. The bouncer comes near Lundqvist, but is cut off and started out by John Moore. Run off by Josephson. Carried back on again by Yager. Yager delays. 
shoots! Save made by Lundquist. Now we're warming up a bit here, aren't we? Here's Boyle dueling in there with Josephson this time. Away from Yager, fed to the back, Salvador shooting one that's knifed down in front by Moore, rebound guided wide by Zajac, he's got Yager in front, and his shot would not go because of Lundquist. Now it's Zajac again, led to the back, Salvador across, Yedlitsky a shot, blocked and covered by Lundquist. Equal opportunity chances, but the New York Rangers came close to opening up a one-goal lead. Here's Rick Nash. What a backhand saucer pass to Chris Kreider. He can't get it to cash just over the crossbar. And how about this one? Derek Stepan looks off, looks off, and then rifles it right off the goal post. Boy, it almost hit Kevin Klein and went right into the uh, goal there. But here you see Matt Zuccarelli. He's kind of putting on the brakes there. He's digging it in, and there you see maybe goes off the top of his stick once it gets past hitting his left skate. And then Yarmir Yaga with a real good opportunity and a good stop from Lundqvist. Carter had his stick held as that one went up against the glass. Gianta fed it back, taken there by Brad Richards in some traffic, and then it's Bernier. Sprawlman's trapping there, and Gianta back out for the Devils after taking that one up high. On out at center, corralled and started back in again by Carter. Dropped off for Gianta, couldn't come up with that one. And right back up comes Richards. Has a man with him, Callahan. Richards delays now. Jammed one that's shrugged off by Brodeur and then covered. Well, the snow intrigued us. Let's see what Stephanie Abrams thinks of it. She's the pro. Well, you know, we had the clouds that moved in, and this system is now producing snow. It's all very light, and I don't think we are going to see a whole lot of it, just kind of this pesky stuff. And our temperatures, a little on the chilly side, in the low 20s, and it feels a lot colder than that with the wind that's blowing. But you guys tell me, a light snow like this doesn't really hurt them too much, right? <laughs> not too much. They'd like to not have a lot because that gets the 10 guys out with the shovels. This is cosmetic snow for right now. And the guys that are sitting on the bench and the coaches, it's a little warm here because those benches are heated. Escaping with this and feeding it back Pouillot and the shot by Girardi carefully turned aside by Brodeur. Ressard menaced there by Henrique. Puck followed up now and it's Pouillot again, met by Henrique through one that ricocheted and can be taken on in some traffic there by Ryan Plo. Off of Ryder, Henrique trying to get there. And Henrique able to spirit it further. Lobbed on around and it's Klo again. Staggered free, got it to Henrique, couldn't pull the trigger on a good shot. Henrique dropped it back off again, but this is carefully played by Pouillot to Moore and back ahead for Zuccarello. A three to three tie, Zuccarello's pass was on the money only for Ryder. And Ryder is able to play it back out to center. Jammed on by Zuccarello, able to lift it right back in again. Not a large player, but an effective one. Matt Zuccarello at 5'7", 179. Rolled along again to Kreider. Kreider sent it back to the point. Line a drive, and it went wide. Swatted into traffic. Moore tried to fire. Ryder shut that one off. Nash played it back to Moore. John Moore back to Nash, who is sent down by Zidlitsky, and there'll be a power play coming up. For the New York Rangers, Jedlitsky to the box, Rangers to the man advantage midway in the second period of a tie game at Yankee Stadium. To Yankee Stadium, second inning, 3-3, Rangers, Devils. And a power play coming for the Rangers. Merrick Jedlitsky on Rick Nash. Cross check. Wes McCauley with the call. Man advantage coming for the guys in white. Jedlitsky in the penalty box. And those are warm too, Doc. <laughs> so usually when you end up in the penalty box, you feel a little shame, but uh, those are warmed as well. So you probably should not have any heat in there, Doc, if no. the guys are taking penalties. Wednesday night, don't miss a classic New York rivalry. Rangers Islanders take it outside here. The Coors Light NHL Stadium Series. Coverage continues Wednesday, 6.30 Eastern, only on NBCSN. The gentlemen who have been working so feverishly on that area around second base near the Devil's Blue Line have come back off now as the snow swirls. Still light in texture, easy for me to say, up here under cover. To the back it comes for a shot that ricocheted to the corner. And then Zuccarello led it to the back! Brodeur made the stop and it was scooped back out and just 
the right moment for the Devils by Volchenko. Rangers warming to the task of breaking this tie. A shot found its way into Brodeur again, and this time he's able to hang on. Well, the last couple of seasons, the Rangers' power play has been near the bottom third of the National Hockey League. Now it's in the top ten, and plays like that. Quick puck movement, good support, net front presence, no hesitation. And you mentioned it, Doc, great pickup. Anton Volchenkov with a clear with Brodeur looking for that puck. Brassard on the draw with Henry. Puck came to the back for another shot, and that one blocked to the corner. After it, Volchenkov taken neatly by Pouillot and fed off. Worming his way around this time was Richards, gave it to the back to McDonough. Beg your pardon, Richards there gives on over to Brassard. Brassard holding and delaying. Looks to Richards. That one was tipped away by Salvador. Richards will have to retrieve. Scaled one on that bounced on to Brassard. Popped on back for the hold by McDonough, and that one went bouncing wide. That was a grounder. And this is thrown all the way back down by Salvador. As long as it finds a hole, that's okay. Three to three is the score. Through the first period, nine hits for the Rangers and eight for the New Jersey Devils. A high hitting game at Yankee Stadium where they said when they opened it, there would be great chances for home runs. Bouncer came on to center. Swept back in and a little bit too far for Nash, but he gets there away from Green. Dueling are Kreider and Fane. Green again, but then Nash tried to twist one in front. Oh, and it came off of Brodeur, and a drive by Richards, and that one blocked down Gianta. Back to his feet again as this comes over to Richards. Brad Richards delaying here. 13 to go on an eventful power play. That shot kicked away, carried back up by Gianta. For the shorthanded Devils, advances to the line and pops it back in. Two shots for the Rangers on this power play that ends as of now. Midway, second period, a 3-3 three to three toss. Taken on by Elias. Swung on further and down for the cover by Lundquist. Jeremy Roenick downstairs. Yeah, I'm with a good friend of mine, John McEnroe. John, you grew up not far from here in Queens, and even not too far from here, you won four U.S. Opens in Flushing Meadow. You've had a lot of time in Yankee stadiums. How, what does this mean to you to have a game like this and probably one of the, your favorite stadiums? I'll tell you, Jeremy, it's great for your sport, though. This is an unbelievable spectacle. Right on cue, our interview, the snow starts falling. This is amazing. I've been here so many times. I love New York, so uh, this is uh, great for your sport and great for our city. How do you feel about what the NHL is doing with all these outdoor games and introducing the history of the game to the fans? Well, I love these these games, but I just don't want them to do too often. You know, a little bit of less is more. I think this is great. Back to back Wednesday night could be a bit nippy, but uh, this is the way hockey should be played. Awesome. You would have made a great hockey player, by the way, but you had that passion. So thanks for joining us and. We'll, uh, we'll hope for your Rangers. I know you want them. Thanks for rain. Thanks for lying. First of all, <laughs> and, and go Rangers. <laughs> Back to you, Doc. Uh, Jr. Don't let him near the boards, near the referees. We understand <laughs> he's got a great tirade that he can unleash if he's not happy with an upcoming call. We must maintain decorum in this sport. <laughs> Curtis Granderson is the only player to hit three home runs in New Yankee Stadium. Patrick Eliash has two. Dominic Moore, Travis Zajac. Mark Stahl and Matt Zuccarello have one each in this game that is tied at three as the snow falls. Rodor stops and paddles it away for Zidlitsky, and he pivots. Full strength action nearing the halfway point of regulation time. Punched across to Zajac, gallops away from Nash, drops it on now for Josephson. Tried to feed one for Yager, but that was into Ranger territory, and then thrown right off of Lundquist by Zidlitsky and out of play over the glass. Tonight, the NFL's best head to Hawaii for the Pro Bowl. And this year's game plays by a whole new set of rules. As the Pro Bowl goes unconferenced and final teams will be set by Hall of Famers Jerry Rice and Deion Sanders. The 2014 Pro Bowl presented by McDonald's coverage begins tonight 7 Eastern on NBC. So John Moore. Oh, no! Kevin Klein.
crosses there with Ryan Klo. Off Zuccarello, turning his rider. Michael Ryder fed it to the back, held there by Salvador. Devils captain pushed one in on goal, followed up by Zidlitsky, and that one went across the net mouth wide. And ducking on back with this one, and starting ahead of Zuccarello. Connects back on now for John Moore. Moore flew it back, high and off the shelf behind Brodeur. Hit with Salvador, rolled off it, played it up to Klo, and Klo just turns right back again. Jitlitsky steers it ahead. Michael Ryder brings it on. First guy to get an assist on an NHL regular season goal outdoors in Edmonton. In worse weather than this. They had chicken noodle soup at the bench and hot chocolate during the game. Not bad. Easy for me to say. Along now comes Zajac. Fed one around in front. Jabbed at by Yager. Steered right back out again by Derek Stepan. Too far for Kreider, not for Green. Back out again and bunted down. Josephson could not reach because of the nice flex move there by Stahl. Cut off by Payne. Steered on to Yager. Handed across, but a difficult one and shaken up on the play was Zajac. Back on comes Nash. Fed on over to Kreider. Dealt back for a hurried shot that's blocked down and off of Payne. Skitters into Brodeur. We remain tied. Almost nine minutes of Thai hockey. Odd here, 3-3. Three, three. For Jones FaceTime, Pierre is with Rangers coach Alain Vigneault. What'd you say to your team after the first period? Because you guys look real quick here in the second. Uh, we just needed to be a little bit quicker in our transition. They try to outnumber us both offensively and defensively. And once we get the puck, if we can turn it around a little bit quicker, we'll get better opportunities. And uh, that's what's happened so far. Have you had to adjust anything because of the weather conditions? This clear sky that we were supposed to get all day. I mean, it was. It's this is great. I mean, this is hockey, and you got to play through it. We'll see. Thanks, Alan. Thanks. Thanks. Man. Yes, forecasts can be foolers sometimes. That patch of light blue, far different than the patch of very solid white northwest of Buffalo for the Pittsburgh Buffalo game in 08. That one came, and that was. Very heavy by the time it ended. Pivoting along with this now is Haglund. Sent back along for Richard. Pushed one in front off of Martin Brodeur. The scoring chances in this period are 6-1 to one in favor of the Rangers. Jammed along by Moore. Taken by Klein. And can be brought on by Callahan. The Rangers captain ladles it up the wing. Chopped away and it comes back on. Along now comes Haglund, and Haglund flies one back in. That's skipped to the corner, and it's taken now by Salvador. Carter to center. Kicked over to Zidlitsky. Bounced on over. Ooh, and Carcillo was run into by Carter. Clean hit. Then along Dominic Moore. And into the glove of Brodeur. And Carcillo right after Carter. Carcillo was involved in the first outdoor game set of fighting majors with Sean Thornton. Here comes Carter. Nicely steps in and slugged one while falling wide. Beautiful move there from Carter going right around Anton Strawman. They worked on that so much yesterday, the New Jersey Devils, that he's just stretching people out and trying to create those one-on-ones like that. Eric Schellina with this. Eric Jelena able to pitch one back up the wing that's sent back over to Klo. Tried for Ryder and rattled around. Then Klo. Twisted on by Broussard. Pursued by the Devils and he had to pop one ahead and it's an on man rush, a three on one. Broussard there across to Zuccarello. He scores! Zuccarello! Well, Eric Jelena is going to go in and pitch, and now all of a sudden, now you have the Rangers off to the races. Bad read in the middle of the ice. Great play by Pouliot. Brassard to Zuccarello. Wait, wait, and then puts it in the wide open net. And then he look where John Moore is, a defenseman. He beats all the back-checking 
New Jersey Devil forwards. That's just a fantastic hockey play by the Rangers taking advantage of a bad pitch by Zelina. And Pete DeBoer is now called a timeout, trying to get his guys settled down and focus on their plan, which is to try to take away the Rangers' speed. They haven't been able to do it here in the second period. Well, Pierre, you talked a lot about their practice philosophy and everything that they were doing yesterday in that situation. If you're gelling out, you got to count. You can't be stepping up there. You, you, you'll take your chances on the three on two from the far blue line in. But all of a sudden, when he pitches in, it becomes a two on one. And a three on one is Pierre mentioned because Johnny Moore jumps into the play. Buck's going to move up the right part of the screen. Here comes Jelena. All of a sudden, look at all the white jerseys. You like that strength in numbers. What a great pass. And then the patience of Zuccarello to hold on to that puck, settle it down, open up the net, open up the ankle, and put it in behind Marty Brodeur. With snow, the ice becomes stickier. Justin Applicator, who played at the University of Michigan in the Winter Classic on New Year's Day, said that more has to be placed behind the passes. This still is not the strong snow that we saw all afternoon there, but it becomes a factor. This one whacked on. Josephson couldn't get it. Stefan could for the Rangers and laid it along for the play to be made back further by Boyle. In an outdoor game, there have been eight players to score multiple goal games. Eliash and Zuccarello, two of those, and they are today inside the glass with Pierre. I just talked to Alan Vigno, and we just saw the Rangers score in an odd man rush. They're clearly trying to play fast, play quick, and they're trying to expose the New Jersey Devils defense. You see them attacking in ways, getting people in that right there, Zuccarello taking advantage, but the Rangers are clearly trying to play a fast-paced game. Oh, here's a strong shot that came from Bruner that was held by Henrik Lundqvist. And Eddie, you talked about it. This is one of the things that Alan Vino has brought to the party here in New York. The Rangers used to be a shot blocking machine. They used to be a defensive machine. That was uh, their organizational identity under the previous coaching staff. With Alan Vino, it's full frontal. It's after you all the time with pace. Yeah, they don't mind playing that rush game. I don't want to say trade chances, but certainly play a straight ahead game. I don't know if they have the I don't know if they're built, Pierre, to play that grind them out, play below the goal line cycle to generate chances. They're going to make plays like that. And when you have defensemen that can really skate like McDonough, like Moore, that have the ability to be able to jump into the play, it's going to play right into the hands of that man right there, the head coach, Elaine Vigneault. Agreed. Directed back in, first one there is Hagelin. Falling was Jedlitsky, Haglund takes it on. Rifles when he scores! Five to three, Carl Haglund! Well, the speed of Carl Haglund to track this puck down. Marty Broder wasn't able to come out and get this puck because of the speed of Haglund. Now watch, he's just gonna skate up the ice and then just fire it back the other way. Eddie, did that change directions? He shoots that on goal. It might have touched Merritt Zedlitsky, and it might nah. even have touched somebody down oh, low. Yeah. Hard that to look, see. That look, you can't yeah. tell, but just a right idea to throw the puck to the front, maybe off of Zedlitsky, and then yeah. up and over the shoulder of Marty Brodeur. Because Brodeur looked fooled. Yeah, he looked like he was looking to his right, and his Zedlitsky was looking that same way all of a sudden it changed direction 10 shots to five Rangers chances have been very lopsided in this period and that's another example of the Rangers playing fast Eddie made a great point Haglund's closing speed on Zerlitsky well Dirk thought about coming out and playing that puck and I think he realized here here comes Carl Haglund Absolutely. knows the player knows the speed I'm not gonna get caught out and no, I know, not looking back, you know, Brodeur, I'm sure, is looking, saying, boy, I should have went on and played that puck. Right. After the fact. Brassard flopped one on, guided on back by Jelen. Four straight goals by the Rangers. In the stadium series, they will play the Islanders on Wednesday. A team that they led 3-1 to one and lost to 5-3 to three this past week. Quick changes have happened. The Rangers coming in having lost their last two. The Devils having won their last two. Bo fed one that kicked on back for a shot by Fain that flopped. Hurried along by Dominic 
Moore. Grabbed off at center by Henrique. Good battle there for Moore to win that puck battle and get it out with his own. Oh, and that one deflected by Henrique on a toss from Flo and a stop by Lundqvist. Stellar stop by Henrik Lundqvist. I was right on the angle there. What a save. He has gotten strong as the afternoon has gone off. Turned along back to the point by Zajac. Green hands to Zidlitsky, delays. Wanted that wrist shot, couldn't do it. Now it's Green slugging one that went off the boards, hoping for Yager. But instead, it is played back to the point again for a drive by Zidlitsky. And that one tangled up. Red there by Klo, spins it to the back. Salvador a shot, and that one blocked in front. Kicked at by Klein, taken on by Zuccarello. Popped on, but Salvador kept it again. This one again blocked down by Klein. Hurried back over to Dominic Moore. Moore just waiting, puts on the brakes. Wanted some help, but Yager was not providing that. Played by a high stick. For that reason, there is a stoppage of play. 4-10 to go in the second period. A reversal. Rangers 5, Devils 3. In football coaching, there was a man named John Madden who even on the coldest of days would wear a short sleeve shirt. This is Kaz Marks. For the 19th year, the equipment man for the Rangers and forever, I do respect him or wonder about him. Being out in all of this, the cold and the snow with a very lightweight hooded shirt. Parents, don't let your children do that on a day like this. <laughs> Marx is an adult. Flipped on now for Haglund. The guy who got the fifth of the Ranger goal sees this one knifed away and can be controlled back by Zaja. Under four minutes to go in the second period of a game that the Devils once led three to one. Josephson wants to try and close the gap by playing the Yacht. Pretty good conception, it just doesn't work out because of Callahan who goes down. Skipped on around for the outlet pass that's carried back up by Hagler. Moves back on and hands to Richards. Shot one that's deflected up into the mesh and out of play. Can to go back to the goal from Carl Haglund? Here's Carl Haglund. Couple of deflections, watch. I believe it goes off the side of the pants or the jersey of Marek Zidlitsky and then watch what happens here at the mask area of Marty Brodeur. Shot, pants, side of the mask, and in the back of the net. Haglund with his 12th of the year. Games within games. Devils had the lead at 3-2 at the end of the first, but the Rangers have been dominant here in the second. Nash goes after this one. Hit by Green. Puck played by Fain. Fain out of Providence College jammed that one ahead. Comes on across, we're hoping to come up with it, but no luck that time with Bruner. Green with a shoulder check on Stefan. A couple of American boys come together there. Marked back in by Elias, handed on to Zubris. Zubris trying to control for the shot, but's denied him by Stahl. So Volchenkov chases it down. And we get an icing call. NHL revealed a season like no other gives you unprecedented access to the NHL's top stars on and off the ice from the outdoor games through the Olympics. A new episode Wednesday, 10 Eastern on NBC SN. How about Mike Milberry revealed? That'd Pass. be pretty good. <laughs> He's listening next door. Oh uh, yeah, we're Mike very... is up here in the safety uh, <laughs> out from under the elements as well. And we always look forward to uh, hearing what he has to say between periods as well as any other time when the mics are not on. This is brushed on out the center, and Kreider pops one in. Goes well away from Stepan, and is taken by Travis Zajac. Zajac then on to Yarmir. Yager has to hurry. Ranger forecheck was pretty impressive there, though it's broken with the toss back in by Girardi. And wedged on around. Jelena tries to play further, and then is able to step off. Eric Jelena, third leading scorer among rookies this year. Tucked that one back in. Yager pivots with it. Got it onto the back for a shot. That is blocked away. Can be played by Zajac. Lifted onto Zidlitsky. Scaled off the corner board. And then McDonough. But that one came right back out in front. But Broussard was careful and watching. On now to Zuccarello. He's got two. Elioch has two as well. This one skipped through him. And on to center. Cranked right back in again by Kevin Klein. 
So Brodeur paddles it on for the control of Bryce Salvador. Circle to circle to Zidlitsky with 100 seconds to go in the second period. Line tried to work one ahead, could not. Put it on now for Bernier, wanting to step by with Carter. And out of the scramble, it's Gianza with a shot that wouldn't go. Rebound comes on back, Shedlitsky with it there. Gives it over to Salvador, shooting one, and that one knifed at in a cluster of players, but emerging back out with it now is Haglund. Haglund pulls up, backhands one that slips wide, and then the centering attempt from Callahan won't work. Richards wanted to force it back, could not. Digging in is Gianta to work along with Haglund. Out of the scrum, in the corner. Callahan still jamming his stick in and trying to free it as Hagelin. And it's pulled away by Gianta, who starts it out with his line of Bernier and Carter. Retrieved by Stahl, run into by Bernier. Rangers able to step right back out, shifting from defense to offense, but then one back near Marty Brodeur. 41-year-old netminder gave it on across to Fane, given on to Green, and Green with his head up moves on ahead. Green able to gain the zone. Oh, and then he's rifled down to the ice there by Strollman. Played right back up the wing, and it's step on across. They score! The Rangers have made it five consecutive goals to go ahead six to three. This entire second period, we've talked about the Rangers turning the tables and playing fast. It all starts with Anton Strawman's big hit on Andy Green in the middle of the ice. You'll see six, number six, step up on number six. Then the quick counter, the stretch pass by Mark Stahl. Odd man rush for the Rangers. Rick Nash distributes, and what a finish down low. What great hockey by the New York Rangers, Eddie and Doc, and a nice finish down low by Chris Greiner. Three goals on the last three shots. Well, Mark Fain was coming back defensively there. Got his stick in between the passing lane of Rick Nash and Chris Kreider. But the transition game, as Beard made mention of the Rangers, the difference. I believe Nash is going to get credit for this goal. As Mark Fain was trying to defend that three-on-one. Just get it to the net. And the Rangers have six. Consecutive three-on-one breaks have resulted in a couple of goals down to the last 11.8 as the puck went out of play near the Devils bench. Derek Stepan with a rink-wide pass. There's the hit coming right at you. Mark Fain's in the middle. The pass is going to go to National. Watch Fain. Right there, yeah, off the stick blade between the legs of Marty Brodeur. Nash trying to get to Kreider, doing the right thing, but he's rewarded because of that thought process. Good eye, Eddie. Here they go. Never a bad play to put the puck on net. And one last try. Deflected out of play with 1.5 to go. Here in a spectacular second period for New York and a house of horrors for the home team, New Jersey. Stahl, Zuccarello with two, and Haglin with one, and then Nash after it was three to one in favor of New Jersey. What will we see in the third? That'll be a part of the speculation that will be coming from our group next door. And JR perhaps out in the stand. So you think about a couple of the goals in this period, right? Off of Zidlitsky, that one off of Fane. Fortunate breaks for the Rangers. Well, they took this game speed-wise to another level. Stay tuned to the Discover Card second intermission. Liam McHugh, Mike Milbury, and Keith Jones. A Pro Bowl preview will be coming up. Presumably not from those three, though they are football knowledgeable. And a performance by the Rockettes. Matt Zuccarello with Pierre. Thanks very much, Doc. You guys were down by a goal going into the start of the second period. Now you're up by three. What did you do to turn the tables? I don't know. We just had to play simple, you know. Uh, we got some good bounces with us and uh, working hard. Matt, you have two goals in this game. And all season long, since Alan Vigneault has been here, you look so comfortable. Why is that? I don't know. Like, uh, playing a lot, get, uh, get to play the minutes, and uh, 
you take pride in that and uh, you want to do well every night. So it's just uh, go out there and try and do my best. Thanks a lot. Keep having fun with us. Thank you very much. Doc? His best was pretty good. In that period, his team had 11 shots. The Devils had seven. Two period totals, 21-17 in favor of the Rangers. And on the big board, they got him doubled right now with five straight, 6-3. Six to three, Rangers started the third period along that walkway. The Rangers were playing catch with the baseball during the sun delay. Corey Schneider now becomes the goaltender for New Jersey. Let's start something special, presented by Honda. Well, it started with a big hit. Anton Strawman on Andy Green, and then the pass from Derek Stepan to Rick Nash. Fortunate bounce for the Rangers, and that's the way it was in that second period off the stick of Fane in behind Marty Brodeur. You think about three of the goals that were scored in that second period by the Rangers. The one off of Fane, the one off of Zidlitsky, and then the one off of Zuccarello skate. So three of those goals, lucky bounces for the Rangers. Corey Schneider is 27. He is 4-0-2 in his last six appearances. He wears the number 35 for his favorite goaltender, Mike Richter, a legend for the New York Rangers. It should not enter into this, but he is a fan of the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> and he used to play for Alain Vigno in Vancouver, Doc. There are a lot of connections here. How are you finding snow, et cetera, down there, Pierre? Good so far. Not nearly as heavy uh, as what we experienced in Ann Arbor at the big house. And I don't think it'll affect the play much here in the third period. It's getting brighter out there, too. We don't know if that means sun or not. It was yesterday a little later than this time. We noticed the sun was just at the rim of Yankee Stadium, where it has historically caused a lot of trouble for left fielders. It was the cause for a delay, the glare from it earlier in the day, but that long ago forgotten about as Yager pushed one on goal and Lundquist was able to answer that. Pivoting along with this now is Zajac, led it to the back and a shot by Jelena went off the board. Meanwhile, it's played along further for Nash. Ripped along now, but this will be settled down by Zidlitsky, given back over to Jelena again. Fires, and that one turned aside for the goal stick of Lundquist. Boy, Jelena can bring it. Number 22 in red. Meanwhile, this one's squibbed off a glove, that of McDonough, and so it is Girardi. Bob Zellina comes from a very athletic family, talking about baseball, being here at Yankee Stadium. His father drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates, and his brother drafted by the California Angels. I understand he'll be going to the Philadelphia Phillies training camp, and that won't be long from now, because the pitchers come first. Here is Green drifting one along, that Elias popped across. Zubris trying to hunt that one down. Played on by Stahl. Scrap for and taken by Elliott. Owner of two goals today. His team down by three early in the third. Brad Richards' pass did not have much on it. And offside is Paul. Eddie, I loved your point about the Rangers and how they're playing with their smaller forwards and pushing the pace. And I really think Alan Vigneault's done a nice job playing to the strengths of their group especially a guy like Carl Hagelin and another player like Matt Zuccarello who's on the ice right now. You know, wanting to play quick and I think really the key is their defenseman of having the green light to go ahead and keep plays alive in the offensive zone, jump into the play and if you think it's right, do it. And that seems to be the mentality for the Rangers, a much quicker team up and down the lineup. Well, tomorrow on NBCSN at 6.30, it's the Sabres and the Penguins. Coverage begins with NHL Live. Also tomorrow, NBCSN, the LA Kings will take on Todd McClellan and the San Jose Sharks. And Wednesday will be right here for the Stadium Series, the Islanders and the Rangers. And then next Sunday, the Red Wings and the Capitals. A little bit of sun creeping over there. Babe Ruth was nobody's fool. The old Yankee Stadium was set out in the same direction. Left field was a problem. It was in his contract that he would play the shade field, right field at Yankee <laughs> Stadium. He could play other positions in other places, just not here in left field. 
Rickle back on. Strawman there is walled by Klo. Meanwhile, it's guided along for Zuccarello, owner of two goals himself. That one Hancock stall, played by Volchenkov. Ryder trying to dig it out. And then followed through by Salvador, sped back in by Klo. Moving in is Henrique. He and Zuccarello cancel, taken along by Ryder, and a feed out in front of that one. Hopped along now for Volchenkov. Yanked along further for Henrique from Klo. Reaching in is Ryder. Ryder trying to twirl one along. And then it is fired around and that ricocheted off Volchenkov and pursued by Salvador. Delayed offside is White, as moving ahead is Zuccarello from 90 feet back in. And so the first block by Schneider. Bounced on out to center and slugged back by Gianta. Foisted back out again by John Moore. Played by a high stick. The pinstripe pads of Henrik Lundqvist and the special helmet mask that has Joe DiMaggio, Babe Ruth, and Lou Gehrig on the side. All a part of celebrating Yankee Stadium and celebrating the tradition of Yankee baseball. They've played in this neighborhood at the old place since 1923 until five years ago. 91 years in the same neighborhood. And a lot of teams came into New York excited about playing here and left empty. Drubbed right back along again and taken by Gianta. Then turned on for some trouble there coming from Bernier. Rangers move it along in the person of Dominic Moore who's been very effective today. Now Jelena brings it ahead, hands on for the outlet pass from Carter to Gianta. Steven Gianta goes right back in after it on his own dump chase. And along it is taken by him, tries for Bernier. Slipped one in front, but that one was cut off by Stepan and taken on by Kreider. Three and a half played here in the third period. Bouncing puck kick back on. Stepping forward was Fain. Meanwhile, it chipped back out to Ukulele. Good play there by Kreider. Used his body to protect the puck and then eventually wedge it out of the zone. Good smart play by a good young developing player for the Rangers. Well, he's really grown over the last year and a bit. Oh, yeah, and his, his skating is his greatest asset, but straight ahead, I think he's understood now that straight ahead is better. And when he struggled in the past, a lot more east-west from center field to home plate. It's better to go from first to third or third to first when you're Chris Kreider with that great speed. 50,105 on hand here at Yankee Stadium. There will be another game on Wednesday night, the Rangers and the New York Islanders. They are saying today that the high temperature on Wednesday will be 19. We will be starting at 7.30 Eastern after dark, presumably lower than that. You like the understatement? <laughs> This one came around behind for Green. Might be single digits by game time on that one. Meanwhile, this one is forced back in, and Schneider stops it behind. But the Islanders have had the Rangers number thus far this year. Played ahead now for a little guide across to Yonker. Well, you sense the next goal is going to be enormous here. It is a large Ranger lead, but momentum has... Bounce back and forth in the first period. It was decidedly Rangers in the second. And largely because of that, they've got the big lead after being down 3-1, ahead 6-3. And here the Devils, they say, you get one, we're going to get a power play. Next thing you know, it's a one-goal game. Zajac across, trying to dip his way by, was Bruner. No luck there. Back that by Stahl. Tried to jam it close quarters, but Zajac there to the back. Salvador a shot. And that one canceled back out to center and chased down by Volchenko. Excellent effort there for Brian Callahan to dive on Bryce Salvador. Stopping that shot with his stick. Unquist there. You notice those pinstripe pads as well. That helmet mask we wanted to get a look at in Chicago about a week and a half ago. It was still in Sweden at that time. Here's a shot that steered back wide. And Lundqvist will be the goaltender for Sweden at the Olympics. To the back it comes for a shot that is at stop by Schneider. Off the stick of McDonough. Then a drive by Jelena had to be stopped by Lundqvist and scaled back out again. Chased down by Zidlitsky. Is there snow significant enough that even the shovels would need to be used during the next stoppage, Pierre? Or is it not causing much of a problem? Not causing much of a problem, but I still think they're going to try to clean it off. 
you're always looking to have the best safety trips as possible. Here's Klein with a backhander, and that one went wide. Outletted by Klo, but not an outlet as Boyle got in the way, then swung across by Ryder. Carcillo able to spike it off. It is Klo again. Drifting, got it over to Henrique, and a shot. Oh, and getting a piece of that was either Lundquist or perhaps it got through to the iron. Boy, there was some room there, short side. Lundquist down, and Henry just not able to elevate it enough on that short side over the right shoulder of Lundquist. A rather peaceful game today, though we do notice that Carcillo is out there. Do you think it would be similar on Wednesday against the Islanders, Pierre? No, sir. Meanwhile, this is, yes. You might have a dance partner. I see. Matt Martin, maybe? Okay. <laughs> Uh, we knew a day ahead in Boston, but uh, the league sort of frowns on these planned parties, so we'll see what happens. How's that? They do okay? Yeah, they, you're just, it's like our plan. Oh, no, yeah, they, <laughs> just whether or not they're going to accept us. <laughs> Offside is called, 12.57 to go in the third. Here at Yankee Stadium, it's the Rangers by three. West McCauley at one time this was a 1-0 game there was some argument about whether the 1-1 tying goal by Dominic Moore was legal let's listen in Did you see that 28 pushed him right in 28 pushed him right in Jersey guy pushed him 28 pushed him right in what did Milby have because he goes, you had the Ranger guy bumping him, right? I go, yeah, after the guy cross-checked him. Guy didn't make any contact with Marty. He was outside the crease. If the Jersey guy doesn't touch him, it's no goal. It off. And I'm giving him a penalty. Well, the talk and discussion was about 28, and that's Anton Volchenkov in red. He's going to push Danny Carcillo into Marty Brodeur, and dissecting what the referees and officials were talking about is hey if Carcillo bumps the uh, the goaltender Marty Brodeur there without help from Volchenkov they would have waved it off but clearly they made the right call on the ice not only verbally but uh, with that uh, referee helmet cam as well the vantage point from the official you see the communication between the officials two of the best that time Wes McCauley's father John was also a longtime referee in the league and had a part in Devil's history sitting in the penalty box when there was a walkout of officials during a playoff game between New Jersey and Boston. John went to the, the legendary official, went to the penalty box, and local men, including Vin Gondleski and John McGinnis, actually refereed the game. Wes was probably a little guy watching back in Canada, and they got through the event. John McGinnis and... Uh, uh, Paul McInnes, I should say, and Vin Godleski are the goal judges here today at either end. But they are indicating, unlike in the old days, whenever the referee points to the net, then they are allowed to turn the light on. At one time, they were allowed to just do it on their own. Shot back along, and Yonker tries to spike it ahead. Almost a two-on-one there with the play by Yonker, getting that puck to Zajac. So we are in chance-taking time. I think, you, you, I think you're getting there. I, I don't know if it's all out right now for the Devils, Doc, because all they need to do is win a face-off here, put the puck in the back of the net, and all of a sudden now you you, know, you don't have to change a whole heck of a lot, but you still got to put a little bit more pressure, but I don't think you start cheating yet. Yarmir Yager is 41, will soon be 42. Wayne Gretzky has a birthday today. Mark Taylor, ex-Ranger Danny Newman, Dale McCourt, Fred Barrett, Daniel Bertillon, Ivan Alinka, Chad Kolarik. All among those celebrating birthdays, and perhaps watching this game, Wayne was there last night for the impressive Anaheim Kings game at Dodger Stadium. Well, it was an outstanding performance there, and great job by the crew. Base creator Brian Engblom, JR did an unbelievable job with all the different hits he was doing like he is here today. He was given a Pro Bowl tackle in the outfield, I understand, and maybe even rougher. Yeah, he was baiting those uh, seven and eight year olds. <laughs> we are in the Bronx, New York. Also in New York is Fordham University. And a graduate was on hand to watch that shutout by 
Jonas Hiller last night. He was also there for 23 by Sandy Kovac. And 31 by Don Sutton. Vin Go! Scully. It was wonderful to see him at the hockey game at his favorite place, Dodger Stadium. Shot is blocked. The follow through comes from Klo. Led on to the back now for Salvador. For the Devils, something must happen soon. That shot is around in front, lurching at it and eventually coming up with it. Henrik Lundqvist. JR has some new amigos here in New York. Well, Doc, I'm definitely braising the elements right now because I am with the crazy New York Ranger fans. Right here! Uh, Brian, Brian, what's it feel watching your, your favorite Rangers outside the Yankee Stadium? You know, nah, not even zero degrees can stop us Ranger fans from coming out and supporting our team, baby. This is New York. You know, and New York is doing their best to beat the New Jersey Devils, right, guys? Let's go, Rangers! Let's go, Doc. Back to you, buddy. He is fantastic. He has done two games in the span of probably, what, 20 hours? I'm not very good at math. JR has been special. He's overnighted along with Dan Craig, the ice guru, who came into the situation today with far different temperatures. A shot by Yager off the boards wide and then covered by Lundquist. Call Star Star NHL to download NHL Game Center. Get a free premium upgrade only on Verizon. Enjoy exclusives like free live NBC national games. Never be without hockey. Some concerned Devils looking on there as this careens back across and has helped on to step on. Could not get a pass away. Nearing the halfway point of the third period. Directed back down on Lundquist. Shovels it aside and it can be played back ahead but off of Nash. Yager reaching in. Saw that one spiked on now to Zajac. Drifting with it now. And then had it checked off his stick and then getting position is step on. Shoved by Zajac and the puck wanted on goal. Held up, blocked off by Schneider, and a penalty shot has been called. Travis Zajac had a chance to shoot the puck at the far blue line. And then Derek Stepan does a great job of using his stick on puck. And watch the right hand of Zajac right there. Replacing the opportunity tonight. Derek Stepan will take this shot. In shootout attempts at the end of a game, he is three out of 13. Schneider has not faced him in one of those, but he will now. We had a penalty shot attempt last night in Los Angeles. It was not scored on. This one was, it is seven to three. Derek step on after a tough start this season's really starting to get going. And here's an example of his confidence with the puck. He looks off Corey Schneider just a little bit. Schneider cheats to his left. And Derek step on rifles it right over Corey Schneider's blocker. Talked about that play. Travis Zajac has a chance to shoot the puck right there. Step on does a great job of getting that stick in the lane. And there he chips it in behind. Now he's off to the races. Draws the penalty shot and beats. Corey Schneider to the stick side. An outstanding stick positioning there from Derek Stepan. Took away that lane, but I thought Zajac could be do it, does it right away. There's a possibility to a scoring chance for the Devils. Paul Chankov retreats to play this, and the Rangers with the legs right now. Hagelin just outreached him and poked it to the corner. Callahan dug it out there. Booted around behind, and up the boards it comes for Klein. Haglund couldn't get that one. Volchenkov takes off his man. Meanwhile, working as Giata, reaching in, but that one careened on over to be worked for again by Haglund. Then by Brad Richards, through Salvador. And we watch from the corner up the other side. Salvador buried his man. It's all right, it's all right. The total of 10 goals so far today ties the most ever in an outdoor game. Seven to three in favor of the New York Rangers. Going back to get this is Klein. 8.50 left in the third. 
So Jelena with Jedlitsky nearby. Gives it over to him for the carry back out. Couple of head fakes and he motors on. With Jelena nearby, Jedlitsky fished it off the boards. Battled for by Stahl, but he's ridden off. Though help came right away from Strollman. Strollman with probably the most keyest of the plays in the second half of this game. And that was the hit on Andy Green that sprung the Rangers back the other way with the sixth goal. Zubris wedges up with Strollman. Eliash trying to pull it free. Two of the first three goals in this game, seemingly a long time ago, were Eliash's. Jabbed on back then by Grissard. Six unanswered goals by the Rangers, including the penalty shot goal a moment ago by Derek Stepan. Dan Filesma undoubtedly watching with interest. He will coach Team USA not that long from now in Sochi. And he sees that you have the ability to choose who you have for a penalty shot rather than the foul player in the Olympics. Stepan showed something there. Poked along and it's Boyle. Played along further now for Carcillo and then Boyle's shot was blocked. Winding to seven and a quarter. Hendrik able to bring it ahead and send it back down. No icing on this play. Girardi will go back to get it. Rattles it on further. Settled down by Carcillo. Pawed on ahead and then Henrique. Ryder brought it back and shuffled it back in. Pretty quiet down there, Pierre. I know you said it wasn't earlier. Quiet on the Devils bench. Very, very loud and gregarious on the Ranger bench. Shaken out in front, and that one forced away, and then a shot is blocked down. It is that sense that you have the opposition pinned down, and we get a stoppage of play. Play halted with 6.40 to go. Third period of play, and it's the Rangers leading 7-3. to three. A cloudy sky. They wish it would have arrived an hour earlier, but it is here nonetheless. The Rangers a 7-3 to three lead over New Jersey. In a very eventful week in this area. Another game here on Wednesday, Rangers Islanders, and then next weekend, out at the Meadowlands of northern New Jersey, just a shot away from where the Devils had played for the first couple of decades and a half. It will be the Super Bowl. And Doc, they're still going to use this building here at Yankee Stadium for a lot of games, and one of the games are going to be Del Barton High School, led by Coach Bruce Chattel against Billy Hanson and Catholic Memorial. Catholic Memorial is a legendary program up in the Boston area. It's produced a ton of NHL players like Teddy Donato, Chris Nyland. And you look at what Bruce Chattel has done with Del Barton. They've been a state champ in New Jersey forever. And one of his best players, Kenny Augustino, who won the national championship at Yale last year. Yale was the scene of a very touching emotional event this past week when the St. Louis Blues went to Yale for a practice but there was another reason that it made a great deal of meaning in the lives of Jaden, Jaden Swartz and his teammates with the St. Louis Blues. Perhaps there's time to get to that, perhaps not. Meanwhile the puck is in motion so we want to stay with that for now. Thrown on by Jelena, the bouncer Collared by Jedlitsky, sped on off of Zajac and back in with 6.10 to go. Worked along now for a little trickler that came back up for the feedback from Josephson and the puck touched by a high stick. The Blacklist starring James Spader is the number one new show on television. Don't miss an all new episode tomorrow, 10, 9 Eastern. 9 Central, I should say, on NBC. Jaden Schwartz's sister, Mandy, who played hockey for the Yale women's team, passed away from leukemia in April of 2011. She was 23, and the Blues made the trip to New Haven to participate in a whiteout for Mandy. One of those things that occasionally, when you're on the road, you have time to do. And there has been no denial that the Blues have class, and they showed it with that. It was a free day for them. They got in a practice, and they also got to help a teammate pay tribute. 5.38 to go. Third period of this contest from Yankee Stadium. 
It is seven to three. It was Mickey Mantle who played so gallantly and despite some persistent injury in Yankee Stadium one, which was designed to face the same direction as this one, Yankee Stadium two and the Babe opened it all up. And that turns out to be the score of this game at seven to three. The very first contest played here in 09 was a preseason game between the Yankees and the Cubs. Who do you think won, Eddie? Uh, I'm going to say not the Cubs. Huh? <laughs> That's true. Yankees 7 to 4. The first regular season game was Cleveland 10 and the Yankees 2. So that one turned out to be, it would have been worse, but Pedro Serrano was at that time still having trouble with the curve. He struck out three times with men on base, or it might have been more significant, but it was bad enough at 10 to 2. Yet the Yankees won the World Series that fall so they could laugh about it later. <laughs> Brought on now by Steven Gianta. Trickled back in for the work being done there feverishly by Bernier and then along for Gianta. Kicked out in front to be taken on by Dominic Moore. Just a workmanlike job done by Moore and by the Rangers. But you admire the guys that don't often get the headlines, though they are doing the workmanlike job, and that's 28 and White today. Remember, Moore was in on the first two goals of the game for the Rangers when they were down. A goal and an assist. He talked about playing street hockey in the snow in Sarnia, but on Christmas Day, playing tackle football in the streets because you could do that in Sarnia because the snow plows had been by and it built nice walls for you to tackle guys into. Uh, that might connect to the Pro Bowl that we have coming up later. I didn't really intend that when I started. This one is slugged back out again by Fain and steered back on in the last four and a quarter. Eliasha shot that's deflected up into the mesh and out of play. And Nick Lundquist looks comfortable in these outdoor games, doesn't he, Eddie and Doc? Yeah, he sure does. I mean, shutting down Daniel Briere in a penalty shot late in the game in Philadelphia to preserve victory is one of many things that we think of when we look back at the nine-year career of Henrik Lundquist. And when you look back to 20 years of Martin Brodeur, first time in the games against the Rangers he's ever given up six. But far beyond that, you look back at some of the games of excellence. He actually played 59 games in a row as the starter over a 12-year span in games between the Rangers and Devils. Jab back up by Jelena and taken on again to center by Adam Henrique. Henrique denied at the line. Hagelin tried to play further and play is halted on an offside. The frieze that surrounds here, that very decorative bit of architecture, and there it is in Heritage Park. Right across the street, this was where old Yankee Stadium stood. There is a Little League Park and also another baseball field located there. They did not forget their roots. Roots do not usually grow in a parking lot, but they do where baseball continues to be played. And there is a ballpark at Old Tiger Stadium in Detroit, designed for the same reason. The flagpole remains. They realize that fields of dreams are very special things. Here is McDonough floating it along. In the last 3.30 of the tilt, the Rangers came in with the standings pressure today. They had lost two straight. They were second place. It could have been taken away from them with a 60-minute loss to the Devils. They fell behind 3-1. to one. And then they got six in a row. A hand pass has stopped the clock. By the end of the spring, Yaramir will be 42. You look at the numbers that he has put up for a career, but more significantly what he's done as a Devils player this year. I don't think anyone thought when Lou Lamorello signed him this past summer that he would be looked at as the leading scorer on the team, but that's exactly what he is. The leader in goals and in assists and in points and in plus minus. There are only two players left in the 1990 draft playing in the National Hockey League, Marty Brodeur and Yarmir Yager. And they both turned 42 as mentioned in the spring. 
And Chris Chelio somewhere is chuckling. They've got six more years to go. <laughs> Thrown to the front, and that waffle boarded away. Both on and off the ice. Yes. <laughs> Cleared back down in the last two and a half. Ryan Carter bangs it ahead, and it escapes down. And there is an icing touch up there. Wednesday night, don't miss a classic New York rivalry as the Rangers and Islanders take it outside at Yankee Stadium. The Coors Light NHL Stadium Series coverage continues Wednesday, 6.30 Eastern, only on NBC. The Rangers, uh, we understand, will not be practicing day of game. The Islanders at last uh, report were. They want to get familiar with the ice yeah, surface. Important to do that. Gloria, for sure. sure. Important to do that. Certainly an advantage for the Rangers, per se, with the surface and the boards and everything else. But don't forget, afternoon game here today, night game, much different setting on Wednesday night to take on the Islanders. And there's a player by the name of John Tavares. If you haven't seen him play yet, the chemistry he has with Kyle Oposo and the New York Islanders is just phenomenal. He is one of the must-see players in the National Hockey League, Johnny Tavares of the Islanders. Rattled back in, and Lundqvist is able to send it back off. Jabbed on further. Second effort by Damian Bruner. And now recovered and brought back by Brassard. With 1.50 to go. This will be six wins in nine games for the Rangers. Five wins in nine for New Jersey. Ranger victory will separate them from Washington. The second place to the seventh place. Six teams will be separated now by five points. And if you go off somewhere on a cruise for two and a half months and you come back around April, you'll probably find the same amount of separation between second or maybe third and seventh, or maybe even eighth, the way the New York Islanders have been playing lately. Away from Boyle and then Zidlitsky. The visitors have won seven of nine regular season NHL outdoor games. The Rangers will be the visitors to the Islanders again on Wednesday. Schneider allows this to go for an icing. And so one more face off at least with 45.2 to go. We mentioned Dan Bilesma in Pittsburgh. We mentioned the deceased coach of the past, Ivan Holinka, passed away 10 years ago but all a part of the coaching fraternity, and we like to salute people on these birthday items now and then just for the remembrance of it, rather than for their maybe being watching or, or perhaps their family and friends doing that. And Tiger Williams may not want us to mention the fact that he and George Ferguson were teammates in Toronto and had a fight on this day in 1975, a discussion allegedly over curfew rules. <laughs> Anyway, it is Carter. Helped on a cross, and this one shanked back in where it will be Bruner to play in the last 10. A large win by the New York Rangers this afternoon. 26 shots to 22. Henrik Lundqvist was strong when he needed to be. He had plenty of support later on. The pinstripe goalie mask and the pinstripe pads are 1 and 0. Oh. And they will be back in use whether he is the starter or not on Wednesday. You get to see those pads and that mask a little closer up here. We'll be talking with Henrik Lundqvist when we come back. Final score in our game this afternoon from Yankee Stadium. The Rangers 7 and the Devils 3.